what is up you back again with another video in today's video man we're back with the my book series um these series always help me uh just reconnect with the story that i'm currently trying to tell um and <sighs> right now currently i'm having a lot of been having a lot of just personal stuff going on so i haven't really um been in the whole book writing mood i would say but i think it's time for us to discuss the battle of los angeles um and it, it it's one of those battles that um it, it it's one of those battles when i wrote it that uh i wanted people to really understand the the horrors uh of fighting um especially early war so this is going to take place in the, the, the middle, middle of the 2080s. So realistically, in my story so far, these are still pretty early years. Those first 40 years of war are pretty... They're pretty early. So, um, you know, when you get into those 2150, the 2200 years, those is when the war becomes kind of this thing that's been, all right, you know, it's been, you know, multiple centuries and generations and decades. Um, but without further ado, let's get in to some of the letters of the Battle of Los Angeles. Now, I've covered Battle of Los Angeles in my book series before, I believe, anyway. Um, I may have not, I don't really remember. Um, but if I haven't, you're basically going to hear some information about it now in this video. Um, I might eventually get to this chapter in the regular chapter videos. But uh, the, the Battle Los Angeles was a catastrophe for both sides it would be a mostly a stalemate for a good chunk of the battle um the biggest thing about los angeles is the appear numbers so we're not talking about a couple thousand enemies a couple thousand u.s troops battle of los angeles was a battle that would require over 20 million hostiles and around about 500,000 to about 2 million U.S. Marines, Rangers, um, and well as local military tank units, Air Force units, Naval units, and so on. This battle had the logistics of fighting the entire Second World War in one battle. I mean, this this required so much logistics. Because um, if I don't know if you guys have ever seen Los Angeles, but Los Angeles is a huge fucking city, bro. It's massive. There's lots of individual streets. Um, and there'll be some key areas in this um, city that will become very, very, very important. Um, I won't be talking a lot about them in this video, but when you read the chapters, um, especially though, I think there's three chapters on Los Angeles, um, you're going to hear about a lot of key locations, you know, the stadiums, the airports, places that we set up fobs or set up um, medical retreats. And these places become very very vital to the, the war effort during this point in time uh and so um there's a couple people that we can follow um one of them is going to be a private name uh john willison he's going to be a private in the fifth marines so he's going to be one of the very first people ever in this battle of Marine of, Mar of los angeles and the best way to describe los angeles's battle is to think of it as everything that could go wrong would go wrong like that's that's the best way to describe it everything the, the worst things you could think of times that and that is what happens so these marines go in with the intention of real controlling the city after the zill attack um and so the idea was to gain control of key locations etc like the airport um getting control of police stations fire stations things they could use to keep the city alive if so they needed more ammo police stations were stocked if they needed water for fires or water to survive most fire stations have some supplies of water um another thing so they would have like they would take up ski locations look for survivors um because the uh when the exil attack los angeles it was like that it was very quick um and a lot of the city didn't get a chance to evacuate so the first couple of days they would work on uh, evacuating the city uh and everything would go pretty normal the marines would pretty much hold their own against small bands of exil forces um but these were marines pushing in from the outskirts of the city right so the, there was a military fob about 
20 miles uh, from the city in the desert that was set up. And that was where the civilians were being sent to. But along this path would be hundreds of thousands of Marines beginning their journeys into the city. Um, they would find key locations, keyholes as they were known. Um, they would nickname these keyholes just because they looked like a keyhole. There was mainly little areas where, where houses were blown up. Um, it allowed, uh, basically roads were designed with the tanks leading the way. Uh, this would allow the infantry to have ent entrances and exits out of the city um, for safety reasons. And so with this keyhole system, they were able to transport thousands of civilians out of the city. Uh, and the first week it goes well. So for the first week, everything's fine for the most part. Um, there's a couple major situations that happen, but for the most part, it's pretty calm. Um, unfortunately, the second week, things would go horrifically wrong when the Exil's main division would arrive. Now, the Exil attack really weirdly. So they don't, they're not like a normal unit where they'll, you know, just hit you with like artillery and they'll push in. Um, what they'll do is they'll push in with the artillery and they'll push in with the air support. And so you're not just getting hit from one front and then the next and the next. You're getting hit by all three fronts at the same time. Well, the U.S. Air Force was not prepared for this at all. Our air superiority would be taken very fast from the situation. And so once air superiority falls in, um, at Los Angeles, things go horrifically wrong for any everyone involved. Like, horrifically wrong. Um, because if you guys have read anything about my book so far, you know that um, the Exil's air, air Force is so much stronger than anyone could have anticipated when this war started i mean they have ai controlled uh, intergalactic fighters that can pretty much shoot you and immediately jump into space and then shoot you again and then jump back down into the ground shoot you again and shoot back to space i mean they, their aircrafts are so far advanced it's it's not even a fair fight and because of this the exil aircraft begin harassing the marines the entire way through the city um it would be uh, like the most hardcore hand-to-hand -hand combat um, or in you know building combat that you will see throughout the entire war. Uh, every house takes them about an hour to clear. An hour to clean a house. Just so you guys understand the, the idea of that, right? In modern combat, you can clear a house in 35 seconds sometimes, maybe five minutes. It doesn't take that much, but if you have a good squad, you just run in the house, clear, check your corners, take out the targets, and move out, right? Super quick, clean, and easy. It was taking them over an hour to finish and open and go through a house and make sure it's safe. That is unimaginably difficult, right? To spell, taking over an hour to clear a house is the thing that you don't want to take an hour. <laughs> like, you don't want to be in a house that you're very out in the open and you're weak, uh, you know, you don't want that. You don't want to be in that situation. So the Marines really do struggle. And you will see thousands of casualties along this point. Uh, and this would go on for about three weeks almost. So it was it was a while of this, of this like constant house house combat. Uh, and the Exil were smart. They would put one of their troops in the house somewhere. And then the Marines would push in. The Exil would put up a fight, making the Marines think there was more of them. And then they, the Exil that was in the house would just call in for air support. They would bomb the whole house, killing every Marine inside, including the Exil. But um, this was becoming a common common thing. And so uh, Private First Class John Willison wrote in a letter to a reporter during the battle. Uh, he was able to get the, the letter out to the reporter. So, um, it's unknown how, but he was able to. Um, and he wrote, we woke up on a stormy, dark day, and the sky was like, like another planet. His squad leader then yelled at him to get to cover as he seen multiple exil rockets being shot at him. They dove into a house and began returning fire. And as, he's, as he looked to his friend, his brother Tom, or his friend, was shot in the head, instantly killing him. They then pushed out the house after the bomb stopped. They ran about 300 feet to a destroyed exil craft that had crashed during the battle they regrouped and struck again and again and after three attempts they were successful but lost 23 men and five wounded in the engagement the suffering was unreal but they kept pushing and this would become a common thing in, in diaries recovered from the battle afterwards um, is these situations where like you would have a commanding officer say get to cover and they would go to cover and they would get instantly ambushed from that cover and so they would pull back 
go to another location for cover because that that location was no longer safe and as soon as they hit the other location boom another ambush and that's this this style of combat that's constantly ambushing americans every foot they take every block they move it's just another you know three day long long firefight um this is becoming common so much common in fact that the u.s marines are losing so much ammo from firefights uh that the Infantry coming in are ordered to bring rucksacks of around 150 rounds per man um, because they needed to resupply the Marines. They couldn't get any airdrops in uh, and vehicles were being targeted. Um, the one keyhole was completely blocked by vehicles being destroyed. So air like tanks, APCs, trucks, Jeeps, those type of things were not allowed to come to the city. It was too dangerous. And this just happens throughout the whole uh the whole whole the whole battle and it gets even worse towards the end um it gets progressively worse uh, especially towards the end when they are in the marines are in charge with holding a key location uh for air support because of course halfway through the battle they are able to take out some ata guns that were being used by the exil which allows the us uh x86s at the time i, I don't remember if i i don't know if they, i don't remember if they had x86s at the time this might have been wrecked a year or two before the x86s were released Either way, it would have been like F-22s, F-22As uh, or something, but uh, their aircraft at the time would have been extremely weak in comparison to the Exil. But thankfully, we have the better pilots, as most of these Exil crafts were AI-oriented, so you could just you know EMP them and they'd be fine. So we do get air superiority back at some point in the battle, it's like halfway through, but it's not like this crazy, crazy thing where... Uh, they're just dominating the air. I mean, we're, we're holding the air, but it's, it's a struggle, right? It, it's not easy to hold the air at this point. So they begin to try to get the last civilians because they know there's civilians still left in the city. Uh, at this time of the battle, there's reliefs believed to be at least 25,000 civilians left in the city. Uh, most are underground in tunnels. And so the Marines start going underground, sending um, four or five man squads kind of like a, spe a special forces division but they're breaking up units to make special forces within the battlefield itself this method works they're able to get a lot of the civilians out um but the casualty rate is just insane to put it lightly it is it was believed and estimated and the battle is still i think even in the story as i'm writing it right now it's been over 60 years almost since this battle has taken place and even still, they're still finding corpses. Um, so the, the death toll at the Battle of Los Angeles is still unknown. Um, but the estimates is around 2.5 million U.S. Marines were killed. And around another million or so were missing in action. Out of out of all the battles that I've wrote in, or writ, not wrote in, writ, <laughs> I, I think the biggest thing for me and why I wanted to make Los Angeles such an important battle um, not only because I was inspired by the Battle of Los Angeles, the movie, um, but because Los Angeles is like an icon for a lot of people. Like, for a lot of people, Los Angeles is like the city, right? It's like New York or, you know, Hollywood, right? And so to see a city be completely crumbled and on its, pretty much put on its knees was an important aspect of the story that I wanted to show. Um, and I think we did, if I think I did a pretty good job of it. I mean, I think I'm going to build upon Los Angeles more in the coming months um, because that's my big, biggest thing is right now. I've kind of stopped writing the book, but I'm still thinking of ways to increase the chapters um, because I, I could write more chapters at the moment, but I, I feel like right now a lot of some of the chapters need some help. So this video is kind of just some background information about los angeles so when you read it you can have a better idea of the situation i mean los angeles was really bad for a lot of marines um the fifth sixth and seventh marine corps divisions seen some serious serious damage um some of which like the fifth marines will never recover um the fifth marines will lose over 79 percent of their unit um including private john, um, john wilson he would die in the battle as well so Something to, something to think about if you're interested in the story. Um, I know some people that are new to the channel might not know what's happening. <laughs> so if you don't know what the fuck I've been talking for about for the last like 13 minutes, I am writing currently writing a book called The World for the World Survival. Um, you can go to my Discord and read about it if you want. Um, or you can watch the rest of the videos that are be be before this. So the last you know 11 videos. Um, 
but yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it. The video, man. I, I was gonna make this super long, but I figured you guys didn't want to listen to me talk about the book for 45 minutes again. So <laughs> I figured a shorter video this week would be much better. Um, and then I think tomorrow is Monday, so we have the Keep It Real Monday video coming tomorrow. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about yet, but I definitely want to do one tomorrow for y'all. But uh, with that being said, I love you guys. You're one of a kind. You're beautiful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.